morning tau overflows past dissolving into the future past dissolving into the future moving finger rights and having writ moves on nor all thy piety nor wit shall lure it to cancel half a line moving finger rights and having writ moves on nor all thy piety nor wit shall cancel half a line when i said past dissolves into the future but it happens in the present moment this is the moment when the past that was ram krishna was merging dissolving into vivekanand for the continuation of the journey it was in late 1881 or early 1882 narendranath went to dakshineshwar with two of his friends and to meet ram krishna the meeting proved to be the turning point in his life although he did not initially accepted ram krishna as his master and rebelled against his idea he was attracted by his personality by his beingness and began to frequently visit him at dakshineshwar koshipur he initially saw ram krishna's ecstasies trance and visions as mere figments of imagination and hallucination he was the member of brahma samaj he opposed to worship polytheism and ram krishna's worship of kali he even rejected the advait philosophy of identity with the absolute as blasphemy and madness and often ridiculed the idea narendra tested ram krishna who faced his arguments patiently try to see the truth he tried to see the truth from all angles he replied narendranath's father died in 1884 that left the family into bankruptcy creditors began demanding the repayment of loans relatives threatened to evict the family from the ancestral home narendra once a son of a well to family became one of the poorest students in his college he unsuccessfully tried to find work and questioned god's existence this happens with all of us but found solace in ram krishna and his visit to dakshineshwar one day narendra requested ram krishna to pray to kali for his family's financial welfare ram krishna instead suggested him to go to the temple himself and pray following the suggestion he went to the temple thrice but failed to pray for any kind of worldly necessities those who are destined to work for inner development and for humanity existence takes care of them in myriad ways ultimately he prayed for true wisdom and devotion from the goddess narendra gradually grew ready to renounce everything for the sake of realizing god and accepting ram krishna as his master it was in 1885 ram krishna developed throat cancer and he was transferred to calcutta and later to a garden house in kosipur narendra and other disciples 
took care of Ramakrishna during that time. Ramakrishna, Narin was the chief among them. During the last days, Narin's spiritual training continued. At Kosipur, he experienced Nirvikal, Nirvikalp Samadhi. The formless Samadhi entered into the formless state. Narin and several other disciples received okro robes from Ramakrishna, forming the first monastic order. He was taught that service to humanity was the most effective worship of God. Ramakrishna asked him to care for other monastic disciples although he was the youngest but the wisest among all and in turn asked them to see Narin as their leader. Ramakrishna died, asked, entered into Samadhi in the early morning hours of 16th of August 1886 in Kosipur. Vivekananda by then he had assumed the name from 1888 to 1895. He wandered throughout the length and breadth of the country, spreading the message of Ram Krishna. Vivekananda talked about Gyan Yoga in one of his discourses. He says, the Mahabharat is an epic that most Indians know. Let me give you the summary through Vyas, the composer with Vyas initial sloka, sutra. The slok holds the entire summary of this gigantic epic. The sloka is given in the initials of Ved Vyas text itself which says Hastinapur, where the Kaurav kingdom was and in particular Hastinapur was connected with Duryodhan, is an old tree of spirituality, the incarnation of all virtues, that is Vrishakarna, in is its trunk, King Dhritarasht, the blind king and old grand sire Bhishma are its roots. Drona, the archery teacher, Dusashan and Kauravas are branches and evil Shakuni is its blooming flower and I myself, Krishna Dwaipan, the that was another name for Vedvyas, along with Narad and seven sages are its twigs. Concerning the Yudhishthir, the Pandav side, he says Indraprasth, related to Yudhishthir where he established his kingdom, is a new tree of righteousness, is a new tree of righteousness. Krishna is its trunk. Sages and Brahmins are its roots. Bhim and Arjun are its branches. Nakul and Sahadev are its twigs. And Vrishketu is its fruits. I would like, I would also like to narrate you the interpretation of the shloka by sage Bhash, whose writings and proses include scraps of history, tales and legends. He regarded the three dushtam or three evils against the progress of Bharat, evil Indra, Dron and Arjun. The shloka was written in Sanskrit and translated in Prakrit language, that the language that was used by Buddha. Its English translation goes like this. The great Aryavart, the word is used for Indian, the entire Indian peninsula shall never go on the path of progress if it has evil in its society. 
who discriminates worthy men and who are arrogant in their nature ravan too was arrogant through his deeds and his name vanished away from the history forever the tridushtam arjun his arrogance preceptor drown and his evil father indra are all allegories of discrimination and chhatriya arrogance arrogance of the society there will always be domination discrimination arrogance and the tridushtam in every society consider it a rule of the nature but for every tridushtam the means three poles there will be a heroic karna to shatter this arrogance and dominance and shall attain great fame and name in the world in his youth he visited ram krishna and came in contact with ram krishna ram krishna invited him and after his death narendra left his family home and went to find solace in ram krishna movement this is very strange and this is how it happens life moves in a very different manner master is the one who can envision beyond time and space is not that master can envision a vision is given to him and there has been the examples in the history ram krishna saw a great seed that needs to be blossomed in narind as vivekanand nakshbandi sheik hazrat ba mohammad samasi so a great flower in the form of shah bahauddin nakshband many decades before he was born he used to stand facing a particular direction and when the disciple asks what has happened he will say that i am getting a smell of a beautiful rose from this direction many years after when Shah Bahauddin was born he sent his chief disciple to welcome him 100 years ago hazrat Shah Abul Hasan Nasirabadi made a prediction that two people from Hindu religion will enter this sacred path of Nakshbandi tarikat and these two were Ramchandra Lala ji and Raghavar Dayal Chacha ji the history is full of such events even before i was born it was predicted by Sheikh Brijmohan Lal that he will go to the west and do my work there all these things are destined and things take we are here to allow these things to materialize in life similar incident as i go on tomorrow session the vision that vivekanand saw his talk at the parliament of religions and events relating to that i'll continue in tomorrow's session enough for now